Sois in Tenegum, Kirie, if Logisonic to Kata, Marcon Angeo, if Angel, you to Anagnosma. Then we came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabuni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Oh, Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Tomorrow, actually, is the last Sunday of the Holy Great Fast, because, because the Sunday after is Hosanna Sunday, which is the beginning of Holy Week, and the Sunday that follows will be the Feast of Resurrection. And the church actually used to baptize all the people who are learning about Christianity on this Sunday in order to participate in the Holy Week as full believers. That's why traditionally this Sunday is called the Baptism Sunday because all those who will join the church are baptized on this Sunday. That's why the readings actually of all this week, starting from Monday until today, are about baptism, about baptism. And baptism is actually called the mystery or the sacrament of enlightenment. Before baptism, the person is in darkness. But after baptism, he moved from darkness to light. Because before baptism, the person is living in the kingdom of darkness. But after baptism, he is transferred to the kingdom of Christ, the son of righteousness. And when St. Paul, who used to persecute the church, received his baptism, the book of Acts tells us that he was blind. But after baptism, 
scales fell from his eyes and he received his sight. And this is an indication that before baptism we are blind, but after baptism we are enlightened. We can see God in our life. That's why tomorrow the gospel is about the man who was born blind and how he moved from uh, blindness to uh, light. As he said, one thing I know that I was blind and now I can see. And today the gospel is another a blind man, Bartimaeus, who is begging in the road and how the Lord healed him, healed him and he received his son. Why baptism is called the sacrament of enlightenment? Because when we were born, we were born with the original sin, we were born in the kingdom of darkness. As the Lord said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he who is born from the flesh is flesh. Meaning what? Meaning he is led the person by the desires of the flesh. Meaning, when we are born from our parents, we are carnal people. That's why this person who was born from the biological parents is carnal, born with original sin, born with corrupted nature, so this under sentence of death, this person has to die completely and then to be risen again and to be born again, not of flesh, but of spirit. As the Lord said to Nicodemus again, but he who is born of spirit is spirit. That's why in baptism, the person is totally immersed under the water three times in the name of the Holy Trinity. Why? Because he dies with Christ, he is buried with Christ, and he is risen with Christ. As St. Paul explained in Romans chapter 6, we are buried with him in baptism. So in baptism, the person, the carnal person who is born from the parents dies and is buried, but he is risen again, he is born again, but this time not born from flesh, but from the spirit. And now he is a spiritual person. His sins are forgiven in the water of baptism. He put on the new nature, the nature of Christ. That's why St. Paul said, you who were baptized, you are new creation in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is, now he received the righteousness of Christ as a free gift. He is not under the sentence of death because he is risen with Christ. That's why he actually, before baptism, he was in the kingdom of darkness, but now, he is in the kingdom of light. And the story of the blind man, the man who was born blind, or the story of Bartimaeus that we heard today from Mark chapter 10, explained to us the mystery of enlightenment. Unfortunately, all of us, without exception, after our baptism, we may go back again to the kingdom of darkness when we live in sin, when we don't live righteous. But thanks be to God that he enlightened us through another sacrament, is the sacrament of repentance, confession, and also sacrament of communion. Through these sacraments, we are enlightened again 
and we move again from darkness to light. That's why the fathers of the church called the, the repentance and confession second baptism, second baptism. Because as in baptism we move from darkness to light, then if we sin, we as if there is a relapse happened. We went back to be in darkness. But with repentance and confession and communion, we move back to the uh, kingdom of light. That's why the church called it the repentance second baptism. So let us follow the steps of Bartimaeus. And let us see how Bartimaeus was able to receive his sight. Yes, I understand he received the physical sight. But let us try to understand these steps because if we walk in the same steps, we can receive our spiritual enlightenment and our spiritual sight. The first point, he admitted that he is blind. He admitted that he is blind and he needs help. He was begging. Many times we are in denial. We don't admit our spiritual blindness and we believe that we can see. Tomorrow, in the Gospel from John chapter 9, the Lord said to the scribe and Pharisees a very important uh, warning. If you were blind, you would not have sinned. If you admitted your blindness, then you would have asked for help and you wouldn't have any sin. But since you say that we can see, your sin remains. When we are in denial, when we are self-righteous, and we deny that we have a problem, we deny that we are blind, then actually our sin remains. So the first step to restore our spiritual sight and our spiritual enlightenment, to admit that we are spiritually blind and we need help. Then the second step, who can help us? He was begging, but the people cannot give him his sight again. Maybe they can give him some money, and that's it. But let us remember the words of St. Peter and John, when Peter said to the man who was begging at the door of the temple, I don't have silver or gold, but what I have I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. So, if we need help, let us cry to the true physician who can restore our spiritual sight. Let us cry to God. Beautiful here uh, about Bartimaeus, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He cried. He did not only just talk to him, but he was crying. Crying here is a symbol of zeal in prayer. How our prayers should be fervent from the depth of our heart. And this prayer, actually, all of us who can pray it. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm spiritually blind. I need you to enlighten my eyes. I need you to help me to overcome the sins that enslaved me. I need to liberate me from the captivity of sin, as we were speaking yesterday in our Bible study. It is only God who can set us free from the captivity of sin. So he cried, but after he cried, what happened? Then many warned him to be quiet. 
Satan will tell you, be quiet. Don't cry. Don't pray. God will not answer you. God doesn't like you. God is angry and upset with you. You are a sinner. God doesn't lis listen to sinners. Satan will try to tell you, be quiet. Don't pray. Don't pray. And he will say it to us by several ways. You are busy, don't pray. You are tired, don't pray. Uh, praying is, is boring. Just make the sign of the cross and say the Lord's Prayer and this enough. Do you think God doesn't know what you need? Why you are praying? God told us he would provide what we need even without asking. So Satan will actually try to convince you not to pray. Even when you stand to pray, actually Satan will make you feel tired, sleepy. You cannot stand. You want just to rest. He will fight you. You know why? Because Satan knows that with prayer, you have the grace of God and you can defeat Satan. And Satan doesn't want to be defeated. That's why he will <coughs> make every possible excuse for you to be quiet and not to pray. Many, many warned him, many warned him to be quiet. But I like what he did. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. This is the right response. The more people, the more Satan tell you, be quiet, not to pray, the more you need to cry more. Mar Isaac of Syria said, force yourself on prayer and add more psalms to it. So, when Satan is telling me, be quiet, I actually will make my prayer longer. The more he says to me, be quiet, the more I will make it longer. And this actually should have hope and trust that God will answer my prayer. As the Lord told us, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it will be open to you. And we trust God. He will answer our prayers. Regardless, we are sinners or not, God will answer our prayers. God wants us to talk to him. And one of the saints said to God, if you listen only to the righteous, what, what is unique about you? But what makes you unique is to listen to the sinners like me. When actually I beg you and ask for forgiveness and ask for mercy. And in the, in the Bible, the story, for example, of Nabuchodonosor, Nasser, who was a wicked king. But when we pray, God listened to him. And what happened here? Then Jesus stood still and commanded him to be cool. So God actually responded to him. He responded to him. And he asked him a very important question. He told him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Imagine that God asking each one of us the same question. What do you want me to do for you? What are you going to ask? Are you going to ask for material things? What are you going to ask? The Lord Jesus Christ taught us in the Sermon on the Mountain. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Many times we are worried about what we eat, what we drink, what we wear. But the Lord promised that he will give us all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what we need from him. To forgive our sins, to fill us with the Holy Spirit, to make us walk 
righteously and godly. And this man answered a beautiful sight, a beautiful answer. When the Lord told him, what do you want me to do for you? He told him that I may receive my sight. Let us all of us, let us all of us pray this prayer. Lord, today I like to receive my sight, my spiritual sight. Today I want you to enlighten me. Today I want you to set me free from the captivity of sin. Today I want to enjoy the, the freedom in you and with me. Then the Lord told him, your faith has made you well. Which means, he prayed with faith. Faith means he trust, confidence that God actually can do this for him. And yes, God can set us, set all of us free today from our sins. No matter how long you suffered or you struggled with this sin, no matter how long you struggled with this bad habit, but as the Lord healed Bartimaeus, as he healed the man who was born blind, the Lord came, as we read in Isaiah about the Lord Jesus Christ, he came to give sight to the blind. He came to give sight to the blind. To those who are spiritually blind, today is the day which we can ask for enlightenment and God will actually give us this enlightenment. Then the story is concluded by beautiful discipleship and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. He became one of his disciples. He followed the Lord Jesus Christ. Why I'm asking enlightenment? I'm asking to be enlightened, to be one of his disciples to walk with him, to follow him step by step. And if I follow him here on earth, then I will follow him also to the kingdom of heaven at the end of the days. As the Lord said, where I will be, there also my servant will be. So where is Jesus now? He's in heaven. Those who follow him will be also with him in heaven. Let us dedicate this liturgy to all of us, for all of us, to pray for our enlightenment, our spiritual enlightenment, have, trusting the Lord that as he healed Bartimaeus from his blindness, he can heal all of us from our spiritual blindness. Glory be to God forever and ever.